What's up guys, uh, Jeff here with the weekly update right here on Deco Creek TV. Happy Wednesday morning to everyone. Uh, so we've got a great episode lined up for you guys today. We're gonna be talking about solid content um, in a concrete sealer or a coating. Um, what does that mean? How does it work? And uh, most importantly, how does it affect us here in the world of decorative concrete? So stay tuned, we're gonna tell you all about it. So have you guys ever gotten confused um, when you're talking to a sales rep or um, reading an article and um, all they ever do is keep spouting out numbers and terms like acrylic uh, resin, eight epoxy, five, 90, five, eight, five, five, or 70, five, polish five, 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 polyurethane. You get to the point where you're just literally ready to pull your hair out and just tell them, what does it mean? What does it all mean, Basil? The great thing is when it comes to the number part of it, um, they generally all mean, all refer to the same thing um, and they're referring to size solid content. And so you can see that we have one of our product lines up here today, uh, our poly armor line, which is a poly aspartic. And you can see that there's 70, 90, 100. Um, we got some stuff here called rock hard urethane and um, it's actually 85% solids. Um, we got some 100% solid epoxy, not to mention some acrylic sealers, um, which also have a solid content. And um, very different um, as far as the actual coating itself, but that solid content, um, that number is all gonna relate back to the same thing, and it means the same thing for all of these coatings, um, no matter which one we're using. Uh, so, to make solid content as easy as possible, um, we're gonna think about it like this. In this, um, can of super stamp seal right here. I've got two different things. I have my solids and then I have my carrier. And um, if I grab a jug of rock hard urethane, same thing. I'm gonna have solids and I'm gonna have a carrier agent. Although the resin content, which is the actual solid, um, is very different across the board for all these coatings. Um, and so is the carrier, it still means the same thing. We still have solid, we still have carrier. So what do I mean by that? Um, basically, when I open this jug up and I spread it out on the floor, um, to the desired thickness um, in this particular jug, 85% solids, um, that means that actually 15% of that is carrier. Again, 85% solids, 15% carrier, um, those are my two different things. And so when I spread that out, and as this coating um, you know, uh, develops a film, and as it gets hard, um, that carrier is essentially gonna just evaporate off and I'm gonna be left with just my solid content. Um, so um, if I grab this, um, jug of super stamp seal and this is actually 25 percent solids and i'm going to actually that'll allow me to spread this out really thin because it's a thin coating and it's only 25 percent of this is actual solid so when i spread this out um literally only a quarter of what I spread out is gonna actually stay there as a solid film content. So if I was gonna think about that as in, I'm just gonna take the cap off of this bottle and I'm gonna um, just leave this to the air, um, let all the carrier actually evaporate, well, within the core, after the course of a couple of years, I'd come back and this would actually only be about that full because half of it, actually three quarters of it is actually gonna just disappear. Um, so. Now that we understand that concept that we have a solid that's going to stay behind and we have a carrier that's going to actually evaporate off, um, well now we can relate that to all of these products. And we get over here on the end and we have something called 100 epoxy. Again, the 100 in that epoxy is referring to the fact that it's 100% solids. And so by the time we get over here, now um, we don't have any shrinkage at all. There is no carrier. Uh, this is 100% resin and everything we put on there, every last bit of it is going to stay behind as a solid film. Um, some of you might um, equate it better this way is um, let's say I had this um, this mixing uh, bucket uh, with a little bit of muddy water in it and you know it all looks like um, one fluid it all just looks like muddy water and I'm sure a lot of you guys have done this and you set that outside for a couple days and then you come back and um, there's no more water left the only thing that's left in there is some dirt at the bottom and that was essentially your solid content that was in that liquid and um, the water um, which was something that evaporated just left um, naturally so we could use the same idea here um, you know I could literally fill this uh, all the way up to the uh, two quart Mark, with that epoxy, when I come back tomorrow morning, it's still gonna be right on that, that uh, two quart mark. It's all gonna be solid. Again, I take this guy here. We haven't even talked about this one yet. Really thin. D1, this is only about 15% solids. Um, I can fill this up now with D1, and if it actually, if I'd actually let all that evaporate again, that would take a really long time for this to happen. Um, but if I actually let all that go and um, let it cure out, um, there would only be 15% of that actually left behind. So now that we know uh, the differences between uh, solid and carrier, um, it's also important to note that there are, you know, definitely different kinds of solids, and we're gonna be um, doing a video 
here in the near future about um, different kinds of concrete coatings. In other words, concrete coatings versus concrete sealers. And uh, we're gonna be using a lot of different actual um, solids of resin. There's also gonna be different carrier agents. Um, carrier agents can generally, the two things you're gonna see um, out there is gonna be water and solvent. Um, now, we get into the solvent end of things. Um, there's gonna be a, a variety of different solvents um, that we actually can use as carriers. But again, um, the whole point of this is that the solid content is not changing and we're still gonna follow the same theory um, no matter what we're doing. So how does this um, actually help us in the world of decorative concrete? Um, well, you know, as we get into it over the next couple of weeks, um, we're gonna be going over, um, we're gonna dive really deep into differences between concrete coatings, concrete sealers, how we can use those differently. But um, just a couple quick things um, that we wanna keep in mind when it comes to solid content is um, for exterior content, generally those are low solid sealers. Um, for interior concrete, if we're talking about a sealer, um, we usually have a little bit higher solid content. Um, if we're talking about actual floor coatings, epoxy coatings, uh, broadcast flooring, anything like that, those are generally usually a high solid content. And so um, again, without getting too deep into it, as things go, acrylic sealers, exterior, low solids, um, concrete coatings, interior, generally high solids. If you're sealing stamped concrete, exterior, um, just keep in mind that, um, you know, using a low solid sealer generally leads to less sheen um, on the surface of the concrete. In other words, not as shiny. Um, something that's um, gonna be a hot, more high solid sealer, it's gonna give you a little bit more sheen there. It's gonna give you some shine. Um, you know, you can even get into things like driveway sealers um, that don't even have a solid content. Uh, they're just a penetrating sealer. So it's a whole different, um, you know, way of looking at it. And, and again, um, you know, uh, that video is gonna be coming out here in a couple weeks and we're gonna dive, uh, dive a lot deeper into, um, you know, how to use different solid content, different areas of decorative concrete so um, guys if you have any questions on any of this please uh, leave it in the comment section below this video and if you guys like this video and you find it helpful um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel hit the bell icon thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next week